All right, this is Nadi and Angelina. Today, we're going to cover four open source rag-based tools for quick implementation of production-ready applications. So if you want to build rag prototypes applications easily, this video is for you. So stick around until the end. Let's dive in. All right. So today I'm going to introduce four tools where you can use for creating rag-based applications. There are tons of tools for creating you know, rag-based applications out there. So when you want to create a rag-based application, you are looking for a tool which gives you a set of features. For instance, you want a tool that you can try several different embedding models, for instance, where it has a very nice data pipeline. You would like to have UIs. So rather than using terminal, you would like to interact with the application via you know, user interfaces. You want to probably try different types of search, things like that. And these tools, these four tools that I'm going to introduce today, give you all of those features, basically, and even more. Let's start with the first one, which is called Verba. As you can see from this here, it says Retrieval Augmented Generation Chatbot powered by VV8. So this library comes from this VV8 company, which has this popular vector database that you can use. And the good thing about Verba is a full-fledged application that you can use. It has a very nice UI. You can see the UI here. When you install that, it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of using different types of embedding models, data pipeline, all the modules that are involved in a RAG. You can easily just change and play with different things. There is a ton of feature here. You can see their feature list, so you can use it to basically integrated with Olama, so creating a write an application, which is completely local. There is integration with Hugging Face, Cohere, Anthropic, OpenAI, so on and so forth. There are various types of embedding where you can use different libraries for digesting different types of documents like PDF, HTML, and so forth. And so I'm not going to go over all the features. They have also hybrid search. So it has a lot of features. You can run it via the Docker or just using pip install and then use it as Python package. So it has a lot of features. However, as far as I know, I think it's just integrated nicely into VV8. So if you want to use a different vector database, you probably cannot use this. I was trying to see if there is anywhere mentioned that you can use it with other vector databases because... Yeah, unlikely. I think they're trying to complete the workflow, right? You don't just want to use the vector database, but you also want some convenience along the lines of whatever you're trying to build. Exactly. Right. But that's a fantastic RAG application. If you want easily just put together and develop an application, and they say that you can also use it in production. So it's not necessarily like for prototype. The second library or open source tool is called, if I pronounce it correctly. Otemon. Sounds like a Otemon. It's, it's an open source RAG based tool for chatting with your documents. And again, it has a very nice UI and there is also a live demo. If I just simply open it in another tab so you can see that this is their UI. I think they are using Gradio from Hugging Face to create the UIs. They have plenty of documentations where you can just go and, and check out some of the good features. Like um, you can easily host your own documents, let's say with web UI, hybrid search or rag pipeline is another thing they support multimodal question answering. So if you have different types of modalities, they support that. Um, they even have advanced citations with document preview. They even have reasoning, you know, React. So that's great. And again, that's extensible. As I said, they're using Gradio, so you can easily customize and add any UI element that you want. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the good features of this library. Very easy to use. You can use it via Docker or just use it from the source or use the Python package. It's pretty straightforward. There is also an admin dashboard, right? So this is another very great library, I think. Um, this looks like it's almost ready to use, right? It's not too much work you have on your hand to, to build. Um, yes, all of them are pretty much ready to I use. Do, you just yeah. need to install and then start using, oh. right? Upload your documents and talk to your documents or if they have other features then you can use them. So you don't need necessarily to, let's say, uh, develop a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? Although you can, because they are all open source. So that's another interesting library. The third library is called 
R2R. So here you can again read the, the, the about. You can build rag-based applications that are scalable and production-ready tools. So that's interesting about this library. I've been following this company for a while. It's a very legitimate, solid company. I think they their tools are pretty good. Mm. Uh, some of the key features, again, multimodal ingestion. So digesting different types of data, including even, let's say, MP3, so audio files. They have hybrid search. They even have graph rag. If you want to integrate knowledge graphs with your rag application, you can manage your app. Uh, they have observability, so you can track all the problems and the consumption, like how much cost these LLMs bring for you, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty configurable and they have, it also has a dashboard. The good thing about all of these libraries so far, they are constantly maintained. So it actively people who are just adding new features, developers, right? Again, you can easily integrate it via a Python package. I think they do have Docker, so probably not here, but I think you can also use Docker to do that. They also have cookbooks showing you how to create different things using this library. This is also a very nice tool where you can use for your RAG applications. So you don't need essentially to start from scratch, right? All of these uh, tools give you a really jump start, right? Where you can just use them. Um, this one is another library. This is mostly, I think, for self-hosted and local development um, tool. This comes from this company. Uh, you know, and 8N. This is also a very fantastic tool. It's pretty thorough. So what's included, self-hosted, right? Low-code platform. They have even 400 integrations with other applications. They are using Olama to create local LLMs and local LLM-based applications. They're using Quadrant as the vector database and Postgres for handling different types of data sources behind the scene. What you can build using this tool, you can create AI agents, summarize PDFs, Slack. But these are just some of the use cases they try to tell you that you can create these sorts of applications. If you have GPUs, they even have instructions how to use it. If you have GPUs, if you have different operating systems or you don't have at all, then they have different instructions. All of the uh, instruction based on Docker. So it's you got to use Docker to be able to use this. You can see it in here. They have even a video that you can take a look to to learn more about it. So these are just some of the applications on GitHub. All of them are open source. They are actively maintained. And you can see they have a lot of stars, uh, which kind of indicates that they are pr um, pretty popular. There are uh, tons of other GitHub repositories and open source tools uh, that we will probably introduce some of them later on. These are just the first batch of introducing RAG-based tools here. Awesome. Uh, I have a question. So, so sounds like these are very handy to use tools to build some quick applications. Is there any caveats of using these libraries? So when you're using someone else's library, there is always some kind of caveat, right? You're sticking to whatever tech stack that they have used. If you want to have 100% control and flexibility, you probably want to build your own tool from scratch. Oh, that's it. Drag based. <laughs> yeah. You don't necessarily need to create everything that you want. Um, but in terms of design pattern, design choices, the tech stack, things like that, well, you got to stick to whatever they are providing here. For RAG, I think here they are using a lot of similar tools behind the scene, just maybe the implementation is different a little bit. I think that necessarily there is a caveat, I would say, but just remember that if you want to use any of these libraries, then, and you want to change them, then you need to more or less read their code to understand what they have done to be able to either reconfigure or extend the library. Mm. Uh, they already offer a lot of features off the shelf or you can use. So for creating basic, even more advanced rag based applications, you don't need to do a lot of things. Mm. But if you are a company that want to, to have your own tool and hundred percent customize, you are going to create your own tool, not necessarily using any of these. Mm -hmm. But for many use cases, for many people who are not necessarily technical or even they're less technical, these are fantastic tools. All right. These, these could be a starting point, right? At least for quick development or prototyping or even production, depending on your requirements, right? At what level uh, of accuracy 
you're looking for your specific data set, right? That's another concern maybe when you're building uh, these type of applications. The level of customization that's needed also mm -hmm. drives the tool that you're going to use, right? If you, you want ultimate flexibility, you probably want to start from scratch. That's right. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. One more question. How are these re uh, related to Llama Index or uh, Lang Chain frameworks? Llama Index or Lang Chain, they are more of a framework, like more kind of a set of tools that you can use that are more low level where you can just build on top of them. Mm -hmm. So these four libraries, I didn't exactly check all the tech stack behind them, but I assume that they are using Lang Chain or Llama Index mostly behind the scenes to do low level things like for data pipeline and things like that. But the difference is they are just a small application that is built on top of more general platforms or frameworks like Llama Index mm -hmm. or Lang. Because Langchain doesn't have any UI per se, right? So you, you can use Langchain, but you have to write your own things with use Langchain functions or Llama Index to build your tool. Here, they have used it. They have built the UI. So you simply just run the, on the application. Okay. So that's it. Sounds good. I think that's it for today. And announcement. We are going to roll out an online live cohort course about how to build production ready RAG systems. And we will provide you hands on experience and all that's needed to build something that you can use for your company or for your product. So stay tuned. We'll release more information about the course later. Thank oh, you. There's no promotional remark from you. We just read it all. So. <laughs> Uh, yes, we will release more information about the details, the topics, but if you are interested in taking the course, make sure to leave a comment in, or, or there is a form that Angelina will share and then you can fill out the form. Sounds good. Looking forward to see you all at the course. See you next time.